Here once again, Elaine Marilakos Edelson with Astrology Mojo. I want to help you get your mojo back. So I'm hoping you can join me today. We're going to be talking about the autumnal equinox here in the northern hemisphere. Uh, yep, uh, we're going to get going with some values and what we can do to create uh, your next best opportunity. What can, you, what can we do about that? So um, I've already been tuning in this morning and taking notes and vibing on things. And <sighs> it's a very auspicious time, very expansive time. So, uh, oh, if you're new to me and you may not know that I say that um, in astrology, the planets or the celestial phases don't do anything to you. We live in a cooperation with the cosmos so that when the planets make a move, you feel it. When you make a move, that's reflected by way of aspects and angles in astrology and astrology tells you what time it is. That's it. It's not positive. It's not negative. It's like looking at your date planner and saying, oh, is it time for wealth, health, passion, and purpose? Maybe all three, maybe just one, maybe uh, harmonizing. That's what we're talking about with this autumnal equinox in the northern hemisphere. So come say hello to me and uh, we're going to get going right away. Um, even if you're not saying hello to me, I know that you're there. You, if you're watching this in a replay or on YouTube where I also post videos, um, you know, this and, it, and it's beyond the date that I'm talking about, September 21st through the 23rd, well, the 24th as well with the new moon energy in Virgo. Um, if you're beyond that date, this still applies to how you can utilize these tools that I talk about and how you can make and create and expand on your desires because this is a, this is an experience, right? Life is an experience. Now you may have been uh, having some difficult times in the past nine months. A lot of people have had to shift their energies and their thoughts to what's really true for me. What I was in a, a way of being and then suddenly, whoa, now I'm here. What the hell just happened to my world? Um, hi, Liana. So come say hello to me. We're talking about the autumnal equinox in the Northern Hemisphere and what it means really and what it means for you and what it could mean. And we want it to mean something really expansive, uh, harmonizing. But, you know, I like to look at the extremes. <laughs> so it's not always about, wow, yeah, we're going to meditate. And I want you to be in that space of, I am a powerful creator. And in this very moment, if I feel crappy, how do I get to happy? That's what we're looking at. And the past nine months have been the most, uh, in many years since the depression, I would say in the thirties, um, or well, also during the meltdown, uh, in the real estate meltdown, 2006. But before that, like, you know, global, what are we looking at here? What are the energies? It's not just you and your little world. Everything you do, think, say, don't say, don't think, and don't do affects every single living thing on this planet and in this galaxy. Wow, yeah, you're that powerful. Did you not know that? Let me say hello. Alyssa, hello, Liana, another Liana spelled differently. And Talitha, we're here. Come say hello. Uh, and also remember to share, to comment, to like, to leave little whatever. Um, and if you're on YouTube watching this in a replay, to subscribe and click the little bell. All right. So equinox is Latin and it means equa, equal, nox, night. So when you are looking at the day and night being exactly the same, September 22nd, 9.31 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, adjust for your time zone. That is the exact moment of the equinox, when the sun passes over the celestial equator on this earth. And 
giving equality, not really, showing equality to you, your world, your life, your decisions, your creations. What do you want to make? What do you want to do? Now, a lot of times people will say to me, um, oh yeah, like I love my job. I love my job. It's so amazing. I love my job. And I go, that's fantastic. Do you feel fulfilled? Do you making the cash you want to make? Or if you're volunteering, do you feel like you're making a difference? Yes, yes, yes. And then, you know, the other aspects of life are in the crapper. Oh, you know, yeah, I just, I can't do a relationship or I just, I don't know how to meet people or I'm in a relationship. I'll just do what I want. You know, he, she, they, they don't get it. Um, so when we have <laughs> a, um, what I like to call a, a contradiction, that is wh what this whole time frame is going to show you big time. Big time. <laughs> but it can be a wonderful experience so that you can get it together. So what do we want to look at? We want to look at, okay, where in the past nine months have you felt disempowered? So many people are going to have like, oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Okay. I want you to distill it down. We're in the essence of the Virgo new moon, which happened on the 17th of September. And um, this vibe is all about creating the, um, the specifics to how you would like to proceed. And then what you come up against is the patterning in your brain, which is a synapse or a neuron that keeps outputting the same old, same old, never going to happen. I'm not enough or blah, blah, blah. It's a, you know, I was abandoned. I was abused. I divorced. I hate my mother. My grandmother beat me, you know, whatever. We all have it. But we're not going to stay in those stories. We're not. Because if you want to move beyond it, you have to start creating new synapses, new ones. So sometimes I look at different ways of talking to myself in those moments where it's like, I can get, like anyone who's a light worker, um, a counselor, someone who assists in the transformation of others, they can get stuck in their own stories or in their own patterns, right? We all do. So the other day I'm thinking, okay, equinox, equality, yeah, night and day, uh, extremes. That's where I like to go. <laughs> so what have the last nine months represented for me? You know, and I go through the list of, oh, well, this was great. That was not, this was okay. This was, mm, this was, nah, nah, nah. and, and then I, I suddenly dawns on me as it usually does that my name Elaine means light. So I thought about this. I was like, my name means light. So I'm going to make a mantra. I am light. I am light. I'm so light. I'm lighter. I'm so light. I'm lighter. And I have been feeling happier and lighter and not focused on the, well, this is the shrinking part of my world, or this is the not happening part of my world, or this is the Isle of Misfit Toys in my world. I'm not looking at that. I don't ignore it. I know that it's there, but I'm expanding on the thing that is happier and more uh, uh, harmonious for me. I am light. So therefore, if I am light, then whatever I create will be imbued with light and be lighter and buoyant and float and be happier. And perhaps, you know, that's something you inhale or absorb on a night when you're not feeling so light. See what I mean? So, um, hi, Michelle. Thanks for showing up. And uh, Ronnie's here as well. Glad to see you are here live. Now, um, so what is the equinox? I want you to, you know, and please comment and let me know what have been your extremes. What's the, you know, for me, the light. I am light. I look for light. I look to feel light in places that feel dark in my body. Not evil or um, harmful, just not aware, not conscious, not in the light. So what has it been for you? What's your extreme? If you could write down in a sentence, and because we're in the Virgo new moon, I want you to keep, you know, abreast of all the things that you're complaining about. 
oh, they never do that. Or I can't believe I got to talk to them again. Or, you know, not another Zoom with mom, you know, or whatever. <laughs> so whatever comes up, what's the negative feeling that you have that's recurring? You know, I talk about this all the time. So here's a door. The equinox is a portal. This is when all the veils separate. This is when all the portals open. And you have easy access now to light workers, light beings, to thoughts, to your own records. I am a librarian in the Akashic world. I'm a librarian. So I always look for what was the remedy? What was the procedure? What was the thing that you uh, made a vow to because of something and now you're done with it, but yet you're still living. You're still living in that pattern of, you know, struggle and grief and, you know, and they're not doing their, what they're supposed to do. And I can't, you know, hey, whoa, what are you doing? Right? Scott, I have a bag of this, Scott. <laughs> Mini me. So, uh, with this Virgo new moon, I want you to, to energy, I want you to really grasp the extremes. What are the contradictions? Tell me what they are. Uh, so someone says, not having a harmonious relationship with people, yourself, that's where it starts. So any kind of uh, extreme that you have in a relationship, and this will apply to everyone, any kind of extreme you have in a relationship means you're not paying attention. That's all. To the clues, to the, oh, Oh, I just love this person. Could be a friendship, could be a romantic relationship, could be a business, you know, cooperative project kind of thing. And you might just look at, I'm only going to look at the positives because we have to get this project done. Or I've been so lonely for so long and it's okay. I'll just ignore those five things that this person just did because the other three things are so amazing. So when we're ignoring and we're not paying attention or we just conveniently disregard, it's not so much the person because you are the magnet for that person, right? Remember, you are the magnet for everything in your world. So, <coughs> excuse me, if you've got um, disharmony in relationships in your world, what is the card I pulled this morning? I kid you not, out of the um, Universal Law deck. Uh, about an hour ago, I pulled this card. Attention. Attention. Attention, citizens of Earth. <laughs> Attention, citizens of Earth. <laughs> Where are you not paying attention? So it can mean you have high standards for a relationship. Okay, great. There's no right or wrong. There's not a judgment on any of this. So if you've got high standards for any kind of relationship then you need to live up to them first, not them. That makes it a little harder. <laughs> makes it a little harder. But if you can take the focus off of, okay, I have disharmony in relationships, then, uh, and you put it on, where do I have harmony in relationships? Oh, well, make a list of all the things that don't work in a relationship. I don't have harmony with my sibling. I don't have harmony with my great uncle Joe. I don't have harmony with the coworkers in my office. I don't have, so make a list, right? It's going to be very long. And then flip it, turn it to the other side. I have harmony in relationships with this person and why? With this group of people and why? And I want you to start focusing on that. As you expand that, the disharmony starts to dissipate and you will always come to a crossroads in uh, relationships. Now, if you care enough to go forward with a person, a group, no matter what the nature of the relationship, if you care to go forward, you have to ask yourself, am I all in? Because if I am, I have to be honest. I have to be open. I have to acquiesce. I have to acknowledge. Oh, yeah, my bad. I'm so sorry I got defensive or I apologize for being so accusatory. I don't know what that is. And then we start the stories. Well, you know, when I was seven, you know, great uncle Bob did the, you know, uh. so then we come to, um, okay, I am now aware of that moment. Here's where you pivot. This is the great opportunity. It's like, I have been defensive because of whatever, put it in a sentence and leave it alone. We're not expanding on it. 
It's not your future story. It's your past. We're releasing the past now. You know, oh my God, I lost a job or, you know, my cousin passed away because of COVID. That's sad. And we, and we want to, you know, pay homage to this. We want to honor these moments that create our experience. But we also don't want to stay there because when you stay there, nothing changes ever, right? So then you turn and say, I've encapsulated the sentence. That's what it was, but I'm in the moment now. I choose, I choose to no longer be that that creates disharmony in relationships. Or because you're going to attract to you anybody and then you might latch on and go oh we have so much fun let's hold hands and skip i have a new best friend yay my new best friend is gonna call me on my birthday and then they don't and you're like hey and then you go right back to the beginning mom never gave me the kind of cake i wanted you know and then you're like whoa when are we gonna stop the story so you're gonna create a new set of neurons that say i am light I always get what i need I trust that the universe provides. I am working toward one hour a day, physically acting out my dreams to come true. At least one hour a day in 24. Come on. <laughs> You're going to get there eventually. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> Let me check in. Uh, Michelle says, not feeling good enough. Not feeling good enough. Okay. Um, now, the not enoughs are huge, and that's like the hallmark of humanity, the hallmark. But let's look at people who excel, that you deem um, successful. It could be a celebrity. It could be the principal at your high school. It could be, you know, uh, Ruth, Ruth Bader. <laughs> oh, shine your light on us. We need you now, Right. So whoever you saw as successful, everybody struggles. Everybody goes through something. But what's that one thing that, let's say, an entrepreneur might have? Let's say you think a celebrity has or someone who has arrived, achieved, you know, gone on to greatness in your mind. What do you think that they have that you don't? Because you have it too. Your timing is different, but you have it. So when you're thinking, I'm not enough... I don't have enough money. I'm not smart enough. My hips are too big. I just, I feel sad. Let's go back to the basics. To create harmony in your world, we're looking at, you have a body, mind, spirit. This is your holy trinity on earth. In astrology, it's your sun, rising, and moon. <laughs> so what's your holy trinity about? What is the thing that you would like to uh, expand upon? The fact that you don't think you're enough. No, nobody really likes to do that. But when you get stuck in a loop, it's hard to get out of. So we want to focus on biology, chemistry, and um, mindfulness. Okay, so biology is, eh, you know, why bother? I'll just eat that bag of chips, whatever, right? Okay, you, you just put yourself in the down column when you're trying to uplift yourself lighter to, to be happy, more buoyant, more expressive, more expansive. You're an expansive creature, yet you're trapped in your body thinking that this is it. This is never it. It goes on and on and on and on and on. It just keeps changing shape. Nothing stays the same ever. You think it does. And then one day it's the last day of your life and you go, I could have, should have, would have. No, we're not going to go there. We're not going there. That's why you're here listening, right? Okay, so the not enoughs. Whatever you think is not enough, I want you to find one moment, one moment in your history that it was enough. It was so enough that you almost didn't want it because it was so big. And you've got one. You've got one moment. You've got one moment where you laughed so hard. It was like, oh my gosh, this is so fulfilling. I watched a comedy show, I listened to a song, I saw a movie, I was enraptured, I had an orgasm with or without someone, I meditated, I had a great night's sleep. You had something that was enough. So think about what that was. Write it down on a piece of paper, okay? So you've got your two columns. You've got your the not enoughs, you've got the can't seem to get it together with relationships. That's a not enough, so thank you. 
Michelle for actually distilling it down to where is it, where is it not enough in your world? Um, what are you paying attention to? Where's the attention going to the negative? You're going to train yourself, retrain yourself to have a new synapse that says, wait, in this moment, I just ate the best meal ever. Uh, I was thirsty and I drank such clean, clear water. Oh my gosh. Or I had a concoction like Elaine does of herbal mixtures. That's purple. (laughs) That is so enough for me, the color alone. That moment is a moment you can like stretch and expand. In this time frame, September 21, 2, and 3, especially now. So you write down the not enoughs, where it's not happening, what wasn't working, and then switch it to it is working. This one thing is working. And it can be small. It can be the pen, your favorite pen. My pen works. Where's my favorite pen? It's actually in the kitchen. I have a pen that I love, and I have an ink, and it's like 0.02 five or seven it's so tiny because it's very fine um and i love that tip and when i write it makes me feel powerful it's the only way i can describe it so uh with us being in the new moon in virgo um even though now we're we've entered the libra phase harmony right we're looking at equilibrium what's going to help us create that moment of pivot I want you to write it down and think about all the times you vowed. Even if you can't remember, you have made vows and contracts. And I am grateful for um, so many different people in this world who, and in fact, I'm going to, I'm going to post um, in my Facebook page. So please um, go there sometime today. And I'm going to post uh, the people that I love listening to because we're saying the same thing. And sometimes I'll go blank or sometimes it's like, oh, I woke up in the middle of the night. The dog was, she's 16, you know, she had to go out four times last week. It's like, oh, I'm just tired. So that's my biology. Then I, I change my chemistry by eating and drinking things or doing just a water fast or a juice fast, something that really helps me that I'm vibing with. And then I change my mindset. And sometimes I listen to other people that are saying the same thing as me. One of them is Molly McCord, um, uh, Nicholas Ashbaugh. He's an amazing, very, he's like my little brother. Feels like my little brother. He's an amazing uh, tarot, intuitive tarot reader. And he can interpret the tarot like no one I have ever met. Nicholas, but I'll post links. And so when you're looking for inspiration in a moment's notice, you can just listen to like five minutes, eight minutes, three minutes, like on your way to work or, um, and some people are going back to work. And uh, so that's exciting. (laughs) Um, Or, uh, you know, when you're brushing your hair, putting on makeup, whatever you're doing, it's like you listen to this podcast, this live show in replay and say, oh, what was that thing she said? He said, they said, oh, yes, I'm going to just hold it right there and pause the button and say, that's what I'm going to repeat over and over and over again. You know, wisdom comes from knowing the order of things and you are the first order of your business. So what's your business right now? You're harmonizing the extremes. Does that make sense? So you can focus on when there was a moment that was enough and start thinking about that moment and how it felt. And then you change your biology. You change your chemistry, your mindset. That's your body, mind, spirit connection suddenly opens wide. And then, and then you make space for the portals and what's coming through the light beings, the light workers, the star seeds, the angelic realm, the galactic councils, they are there. They're talking to you. Your higher self is not just a thing that's out there or a concept. It is, if you can imagine, I want you to imagine putting your attention on the center of this image. Okay. And every thought you think is out here right? It's all the streams of light on the outside, but your higher self is right there in the middle. It's in the center and you can access it. You can open your channel and pull it in and talk to yourself and say, what, 
what did I miss? Why don't I feel enough? Why can't I relate to other people? Why can't I just be part of a group? Why do I feel, is it me? Am I judging? It's always going to be you, but is it me? Am I judging myself so harshly that I keep them away that I don't allow enough to come to me? You are enough because you were created. You're an extension of the light. You're pure conscious love. So as such, you are enough. That's the definition. Now it's about retraining your mind that has had an experience or 12,000 that says, uh, contrary to what you think you are. Yeah. Mm, you fall down, you cry, nobody comes. Oh, I must not be enough. I must have done something wrong. You give and give and give and they don't give back. And you're thinking I'm not enough. Uh, you work and work and work and you don't get the promotion. You don't get the raise. You don't get the clients you want. I'm not enough. I'm not enough. Okay, so then you focus on the not enoughs. Now I'm asking you to do the opposite, to harmonize this time. You know, the doors are accessing, um, the doors that are open out are accessible. So you can grab the energy that's coming through and uplift your vibe. Remember people, we're going from 3D victim perpetrator to 4D, oh, I have a conscience. I, I don't feel right about doing that, voting for them, uh, eating that talking to them, not talking to them. I don't feel, you know, it's like, mm, what's the best? That's the compassionate part to 5D to, I, I'm a creational being. I, I can create my next moment. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. To 60, 60, instant manifestation, moving through the biology of density, really accessing the portals, the open, gateways. Your, your higher self is in 6D. Okay. It's not that far away. You're, you're not so far away. Does that make sense? So let me just check in. Alyssa says, I feel too much. Okay. Well then tone it down instead of feeling too much, separate yourself a little bit so you can get some perspective and making sure that you have boundaries in your in your energy field and closing the gaps and those gaps, the holes that you might have in an energy um, experience is uh, you allow someone to be the power source. You allow someone to take your power, you will, but they can't really. <laughs> it's just a mental game that you play. You know, they took everything I had. <laughs> They can't, they can't. You can get stepped on, like someone can step on your toe and you go, ow, and they turn around and they go, what's the problem? And then suddenly you as a compassionate person say, no, 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 it's not your fault. When all you needed to do is express yourself, ow. I said, ow, because it hurt, not because you did it on purpose, but yet now you're defensive and now I'm coming to your aid. What the twisted frick is that about? You know what I'm talking about, somebody. So we want to access the records to your soul growth. Does it make sense? Vicky says it is exciting. It is exciting. It is exciting. So now tell me what you think the opposite is to your disharmony. What's the opposite? The, the, the disharmony is, uh, whatever with people, you know, I'm not enough, or I can't ever stay in a relationship long enough. They always do this. They betray me. They, they leave me. We, we argue, whatever the issue is, tell me now what the opposite is to that. What's the opposite, the extreme to that? And I'm, Where's the card I had focused on um, a card for you guys? The Garuda Suparna. <sighs> I'm getting lots of vibes today. Oh boy, it's big. Garuda. Now this is, um, Alana Far Fairchild wrote the words to the book that Andrew Gonzalez painted. His artwork is amazing. And he's a really sweet guy. 
So Garuda, flying high, flying high, being able to really fly beyond, to get a different perspective, having the power to lift, to be light enough to fly. So I want you to take the message from Garuda, and this number is 42, it equals a six, and that is finding sanctuary so that you can say, oh, wow, that was overwhelming. Um, You know, I thought I wanted to, you know, be part of a thing. Uh, It was a lot. Now I'm overwhelmed. I just need alone time. And then the phone rings and someone says, oh, my God, did you hear what happened? You're like, oh, no, tell me. Well, did you not just tell yourself you needed alone time? And there you are being seduced by uh, the energy of chatter. Be still. You know, in order to fly high, you got to focus. I remember many years ago, I've had so many visions or experiences uh, in my sleeping state where I once, I don't even remember how long, 20 years maybe, 30 years ago, I remember standing in a place that had different levels to it, recessed, uh, protruding. They, they looked like, it, it almost looked like a train station, but not. And it was very beautiful. And it's funny because a lot of the colors, look at the cover of this, you know, Andrew Gonzalez. He's amazing. Isn't that beautiful? Um, A lot of the colors looked like this. Exactly. With different shading. And so uh, there were people moving about with, they had a lot of purpose. And there were sections. And so I stood a little bewildered. Like I just walked in on something that I was, I got a bird's eye view of. And a woman walked up to me and she said, are, are you ready? And I said, sure. <laughs> I didn't know what I was ready for. And she said, okay, here's what we're going to do. And she handed me a briefcase. I don't, I've never owned a briefcase in my life, so it wasn't symbolic of anything pertinent that I could understand. But it was pretty big and it was heavy. And, and I said, okay. And she said, now, it ought to take you about 10 to 12 steps before you can get there. And I said, where? And then she pointed up. She said, go, take flight. And then I realized, I'm in a training session to learn how to fly. This is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. So, and then you see the, the concept of the, the briefcase, though I understood the meaning, the symbolism, was about the weight that I held in my life. And... Uh, and I'm seeing people, now I'm focused in on, oh, what are they doing up there? They were flying with different purposes. Some people were holding people. Some, and that was another vision I had, but another time. Uh, some people were just running. And some people were doing things with their eyes closed. So everyone was having a different level of, uh, it was not a test, it was an experience on, let's see where you are, okay, and because we know where you want to go, and we want to train you. So I started running and I tried to lift off the ground and thud. I couldn't. And then I realized uh, this suitcase that I held, this briefcase that I held that was very thick, you know, and big black, had a lock at the top and a handle. And, And I thought, okay, I get it. I'm carrying stuff that I don't need to be carrying. So instead of, and I wasn't able to let go, once I took the suitcase, I couldn't let it go or the briefcase. It was in my hand. I couldn't like, it was glued. I couldn't shake it off. So I went back to the back of the line. There was just people like doing their thing. And I'm watching the, the a curator, moderator. I don't know what she was. <laughs> Angel, uh, advisor, spiritual help. Um, and she was pleasant and there was no judgment in her whatsoever. And what I realized was she was streaming light to people, to everybody who was standing there. And so, and I thought, okay, I can't let go of this thing. Maybe I empty it. Maybe I could just empty it without thinking about each thing that was filled, each detail of every experience that weighed me down. I'm just going to empty it without letting go. And so how did I do it? How? Because, you know, the earth signs want to know the how. Uh, I'm a Taurus with a Capricorn rising, and also Virgo wants to know the how. They want the details of how do you get that done? How do you do that? 
So I trusted that it could be done with my intention that I stated, all right, it's done. And I took like eight steps, boom. And I, and I jumped and I flew with the suitcase and I landed on the next level. And I was like, this is awesome. This is so awesome. This could be a game. <laughs> anyway, and then I woke up and I thought, wow, I let a whole lot of stuff go and I didn't have to think about it anymore. You know, sometimes we regurgitate that and then this happened and that happened and that happened and that happened. And, you know, it's time to let it go. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, it's like just when you think it, boom, it can be done. Then you got to replace that second moment with an activity, an action based on, that's why I say give it at least an hour a day where you are um, moving in the direction of the enoughs. So uh, Ronnie says the opposite of her disharmony is acceptance. So that's your mantra. I accept myself. I accept myself. I accept myself. I accept the world as it is. I, oh, that's a hard one, right? For a lot of people. I accept, I accept, I accept. So tell me, what is the opposite to your disharmony? I know you're there. Come talk to me. Uh, what do we got? Okay, a few more minutes, then we're gone. I'm here, folks. I'm here to help. So come and talk to me. What is the opposite to your disharmony? Well, maybe you don't know what your disharmony is. So maybe... Um, Maybe tell me that first and then tell me the disharmony part. I mean, the harmony part. What is the opposite? Remember, we're looking at acceptance, um, attention. So wherever you're putting your attention, that's what's growing. Uh, right. It's difficult. Come on, peeps. Talk to me. It's not just Ronnie out there. So here's, here's another, okay, right? Reciprocity. Now, we've talked about this before. So when you're working on, okay, Hang on, Alyssa, one sec. So when you're working on looking at what you can expand upon during this time frame, and I mean do a ritual, get, I don't want to say jiggy with it. Remember that? Get jiggy with it. Um, the doors are open. The records to your soul growth is expanding right now. The portal is there. I love the word portal instead of door. Portal to me is just an, a, like an opening, an aperture lens, and it has light behind it. A door is like there's a handle, it's wooden or it's tough material and it creaks and I don't know what's behind it. But the portal to me is open. So find the word that helps you to imagine the opening. The acceptance, great word. The focus, now here's the other one, reciprocity. Now people say, well, what does that have to do with my extremes? Um, deep down, you have an expectation that because you've come this far, because you know so much, because you are who you are, that you ought to have completed, finished, started, been, you know, present, you know, seen it. You should have done it. Why didn't you see that? How come you, and you beat yourself up. Reciprocity starts, everything starts within, right? So reciprocity is not... I give to you, you give back to me. That's not reciprocity. That's the ego's negative version of reciprocity. Reciprocity is I give without obligation, without guilt, without attachment, because it fills my soul. And when you do that, it is automatic that you will get back times 10. Automatic. And you may not, because you're thinking, well, I didn't win the lottery, but somebody held the door open for you when you had bundles, reciprocity. Somebody liked your comment on your Facebook page, reciprocity. Somebody shared your information to someone else and it benefited them in so many ways that you might not never know, reciprocity. So it's the cycle of sharing and giving that comes back to you because we live on a spiral of energy. And on that spiral, you change clothes, you change genders, you change thoughts, you change actions, you change beliefs. But at the core of that spiral is pure conscious love. That's who you are. Having many, many 
experiences. Vicky says, resistance. I hear and feel what I should do now just to be brave and jump. Okay. So when you're in a place of resistance, and thank you for saying that, and then Alyssa, we'll get to you with peace. When you're in a place of resistance, um, the thing to do is stop making yourself move forward. Just stop. Because resistance will only grow if you're like pushing against it, pushing against it. Remember, astrologically speaking, let me show you. Do, 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 do. Let me move out of the way. Okay. September 22nd, we're about to get into the sun in Libra, right? That's harmony. There's Venus is in Leo. There's a lot of bright expression happening. Okay. We have Mars retrograde. How do you really want to move forward? Sometimes you're like, I just need to take a break, but it has to get done. But I just want to take a break, but it has to get done. There's resistance right there. So what do you do instead? What do you do instead is you look inward at where is uh, like the Saturn grouping with Jupiter and Pluto. Where's your power? Where's your superpower? What do you love? What do you love, love, love? What do you love? What do you love in the moment that you're feeling it? That's what ends resistance. What do you love? You know, it's, days have gone by and I'm almost done with my astrology masterclass and I know not to push the river. Then I had some tech issues and instead of going the old route of, I'm going to push through this and make sure this, and I just left it on my desktop and I didn't get physically frustrated. I thought, hey, okay, that happened. Hey, it's a good time for lunch. <laughs> so I went and saw and I made something to eat that I loved. And I was so happy and I answered some emails from my phone, which I don't typically do because it's so small. It's like every, the older I get, the smaller things get. Um, right? Okay. So not fighting resistance. It's finding another way around it. What's another way to go? And then I came back to my computer. I quit everything out. I rebooted. It started. And I thought, okay, this is I get my needs are met. My needs are met. My needs are met. Even if I don't know how to meet them, I'm just going to do what is, what is um, the most joyous thing right now in this moment, because I'm going to step to the right. Here comes resistance. Instead of taking it head on like the Taurus bull that I have been, I step to the right. I go sing a song. I check in with a friend. I look at comedy. My husband and I will watch a Genesis video. We love their music. Do something that gives you joy. And that builds reciprocity. Uh, you'll find peace in that, Alyssa. Okay? So whatever is the disruption, the opposite, whatever is the disharmony, and you can't find peace... Again, we got to come back to what's the biology? Are you drinking enough water? Are you dehydrated? With so many planets in Capricorn, are you constipated and don't know it? You know, not to talk that, that topic for too long, but um, if you're not going at least twice a day, you're, you're, you're constipated. Constipation in most people is like, ah, oh, you know, the stomach pains and the icky feeling and that you may not realize, but you're constipated. If you're dehydrated, you will eventually be constipated. <laughs> so you want to look at what's the opposite of peace. You're looking for peace, then find a peaceful moment. If you can't find it, this is the time to create it. This is the open door now. I am peaceful. I mean, it's that simple. You say it, you say it, you say it until you start acting as if you were peaceful. And you see, that's how you retrain everything. You, you move out of the... Uh-uh, it doesn't work. It's not working. Christmas doesn't work out for me. Polar Express. Whatever you think doesn't work out for you, okay. Then the more you focus on it, the bigger it gets and the more it doesn't work out for you. So now, peace. I am peaceful. I am peace. I listen to peaceful things. Shh. Those birds are so peaceful. My pillow is so peaceful. 
This crystal is so peaceful. Those flowers are so peaceful. <sighs> peace is mine. I am peace. You see? And then you start to change your chemistry. And then you realize, you know, I haven't eaten today. I'm getting cranky. It's a blood sugar thing. You have to take care of your biology, people. Do you understand? Biology, chemistry, mindset. Does that make sense? Is that helpful? So now, this is your ritual exercise. And it's, you know, for thousands of years, people have done this in every walk of life. Buddhists have a change of season. Um, Christians, Michael Mass, um, the pagans, you know, it's like you look in history, everybody has a version of it. So now here's your version on a piece of paper, because we're in a Virgo new moon vibe. And my Virgo dog keeps walking up to me and staring at me like it's snack time. And I've been waiting <laughs> and I can't open the closet door myself. <laughs> You make a list of disharmony. What a couple of things, not long, but the ones I keep, you know, like it's been recurring. It's been more than a year. It's been more than two years. It's, you know, the new stuff came up this past year, but your response to it is not new. So you look at that. What's the one thing, two things tops that gets your attention because it's disharmony in your world. It's just something you can't seem to get over. And then you focus on what would the opposite look like? What is the, a sentence, a phrase, a word that in present tense, I am light. I am light. Light comes to me. Light sheds my path. Wait, I don't even remember what I was saying this morning, but it was like, it made so much sense to me. So I am peaceful. Um, I am accepting. I have accepted myself. I accept me, right? Does that make sense? Now, off I go to finish more videos, the last 10, in my Astrology Masterclass program. And I'm very excited about it. All right. Does that make sense? Is this helpful? Please pass it on, and I will be back on Thursday. Coming back on Thursday. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to talk about on Thursday. But it'll be something fun. I guarantee. <laughs> yeah, something fun. Because I, I was like, wait, what is it? Is something coming? No, <laughs> nothing. It'll come to me. Sometimes it, it comes five minutes before I start the show. I kind of just go with it. All right, folks. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being. Be sparkly. Be present. Find those extremes in this three-day period, and I assure you, I assure you, you will transform, you will accelerate your transformation, and you'll also have physical evidence come your way in a dream, um, the doorbell, email, a feeling, your intuition grows, you're expanding, you're a mojo mystic. You're a mojo mystic. Thanks for being here on Mojo Monday. <laughs> All right, I got to go give Coda a treat. She's tippy toeing around me. All right, be well. As always, I wish you peace, and I'll see you on Thursday.